disagree with that perspective. And if enacted, uh, would you support the mandate uh, to the city? First of all, I disagree with it. That's not our job. That's a federal job. But if it is a mandate, I will support it because that would be the law. I want to follow up on that. If it was enacted, even if it was not funded, would you still uh, have to support it? Well, you know, these unfunded mandates are just dragging us down. I mean, there, it, apparently it's very easy to send out a mandate and say, do it, and not worry about where the funds, the state doesn't worry about where the funds come from, but we have to, to worry about that. And I don't know, quite frankly, how much that would cost and where it would come from and would we have to cut other things that are very vital to the city. So to answer that, I guess I would, but I don't know how painful. If it was painful enough, I probably wouldn't want to do it. Well, I think that probably would be a pretty good idea. I haven't really thought about it, but that's really a good idea. I wouldn't oppose it at all. Representative Lilly, and this goes to more of a personal belief, do you believe that a person is born homosexual or chooses to be homosexual? I think they're born hom homosexual. I, my idea, and I'll just be very frank, is that I don't think we're all wired alike, to put it very simply. And uh, so I don't think it's a choice. Maybe occasionally it's a choice, but mostly it's never a choice. What is your position on the following transportation issues? I mentioned before, I think consolidation could help a lot. I'd like to see that we would hold the tax line and live within our budget. I mean, we have in the past frozen salaries so we could make the budget work. We've been very diligent about that with the city manager's direction and helping. And uh, I think, too, revitalizing downtown, I just think it's the time El Paso can come alive and really be the vibrant city it was, oh, probably in the 20s and 30s when, when I, I heard from my grandfather that uh, when Arizona became a state, they didn't have a city big enough to have the President of the United States and everyone come. So they came to El Paso till the, to the Del Norte. And we have to regain that dominance. And, and I think we do. We have everything in the world to offer here. Friendly people, sunshine, all the good things we know. So I think this is a, a, a great time to, to get it back on. I think it's going that way. I think it's a really positive, we're in a really positive situation now. What is the number one threat to El Paso's environment and what are your plans to alleviate that threat? Well, air quality. And quite frankly, I think that what we're thinking about doing biofuel and, and, and this kind of, uh, we're working the environmental district, our department is working this way to start forward on these projects because they take years and, I don't know, millions of dollars to complete. So I think that's a very important part of this. Uh, I think the more, the less car dependent we become, the better off we'll be. Now I have to tell you that I made the big big jump to say I'd walk to work and ride the bus home, which I have. And that's been the best thing because the buses are good and they run on time. But I'm telling you, walking to work is dangerous. And I live in Kern Place. <laughs> and, and the stripes on the streets aren't painted. The walk lights don't, well, they're getting better on my section because I complain every time I go down there. The walk lights aren't walker friendly. Uh, they complain about the traffic. And part of it is because you can't see the white lines. You don't know. And I've had people yell, get out of there, you dumb jaywalker. <laughs> and it's, it's very dangerous. My family thinks I'm a little strange to walk to work. But I'm working on it because I've learned a lot by walking. If we're going to be the least car dependent, we meet, need to make it the friendliest walking city. So. That is definitely one of my goals going forward. 
my definition of family values, if you're asking me if I am for the, let's see, well, I'm for families and family values, but I think they mean different things to everyone. Like I said, I, I don't think everybody's wired alike, but I think we all live in this country, in this very fabulous free country, and, and people that aren't all one exact section, they deserve the same kind of benefits that other people do. So. Can you tell us what you know of the city's efforts to expand the use of renewable energy? Constituents, do you, do you think that they have been satisfactory? And do you have any plans to expand your constituent out, outreach if elected? Well, I, I hope I do. I hope I've done a good job. I certainly try to answer every phone call and email every day. Now, I don't always get it done, but I, that's my goal. And uh, I would like to just keep doing that. If, and if anybody has any suggestions how I could do it better, I would certainly be grateful to hear them. I try to go. Neighborhoods are very, very important to the city. And I have great neighborhood associations in my area. So when they invite me to meetings, I try to go. I have a breakfast meeting every month where I invite someone from a city department, usually, to come and speak. And uh, I think that helps. And if anybody wants a certain speaker, uh, for example, they wanted someone from Asarco. And so I had uh, Mr. Puga, and that was well attended and lots of questions. So that's the kind of outreach I do, and if there's any better way, I'd like to know it. I'd be glad to do it. Because um, that's how I know what the citizens in District 1 and even the city of El Paso mean. And that's really a help when I go to city council and there's a program or, or an ordinance. That really makes me have some idea what's needed in the city. Well, going forward, I would like to, as I said, hold the line on taxes. I would like to see about consolidating more departments with the county. We're looking into parks. Now, whether that works out, I don't know. Um, it certainly would be an asset because that's another way open space. It's a quality of life that we need to bring new businesses here. And I've seen in different programs that that's some of the thing they look for is, is parks and open space. Uh, we have great museums now, great art museums. We have Matisse and Monet right now, which is an incredible uh, art exhibit. We have this wonderful history museum with 300 years of, of history. And till May, I think it goes on. And, and if you haven't seen it, it's really unique and good. And we need to publicize this. And I think we do it an okay job. We could do a lot better. And that's, that'll make our city vibrant. And as I say, I think we need to paint the white stripes downtown. It'll make it look cleaner. Everybody's always complaining. And, and you know, just a good vibrant city is what I'm looking for. And I think we have a lot of ways to go and a lot of interesting things coming forward.